first discovered Peter Allen when I was about 14. My mum came to me one Saturday afternoon, I just finished dancing some class, and she said, someone's given her tickets to see this guy, she called him, uh, Peter Allen, because we didn't know who he was at that point. Whoa, whoa, this guy, well, he flounced onto the stage, really, and um, flounced off um, three hours later. He was charming, he was, he was witty, it was his sense of humour, I think, that I took away from that more than anything. He sent himself up and then he sang the most tender, heartwarming songs, as well as shaking his maracas and doing sit-ups on the piano and high kicks and tapping. And by the end of the show, I think the seed was kind of planted in me that I knew uh, what I wanted to do in my life. I mean, I didn't know that later in my life I would be doing exactly that, singing those songs, trying to be him. But I have a favourite letter. I have a favourite letter from a lady in Adelaide called Joan Bowler. Joan wrote to me. She said, Todd, two things. First of all, you looked more like Bob Down than Peter Allen. Second of all, how on earth could you do the life story of Peter Allen without Copacabana? I am not the boy next door. I don't belong like it did before. Nothing ever seems like it used to be. You can have your dreams, but you can't have her. I won't go back there anymore. Cause I am not the boy next door. I love touring. I love the songs of Peter Allen, the stories have only really half been told. So this show, it's not like I'm touring The Boy From Oz. It's not a scripted show. It's probably looking at Peter Allen from my point of view and how it's affected my life and my stories of being in The Boy From Oz and my stories of working with Chrissy Amplett who played Judy Garland in The Boy From Oz. See, when you do a show, especially about a, some, a real person like Peter Allen, so many people come up to you throughout the course of the show and they actually give, feed you stories, like their meetings with Peter and and whether he was a good boy or a bad boy or a naughty boy or a really bad boy, um, they want to tell you. So I've got all this information, all this stuff which you could never put in the boy from Oz because some of it's probably a little raunchy. I've been singing with me, please. Cities that never close down. From New York to Rio and all to London town. But no matter how far or how wide I roam, I still call Australia. So you're going to get Todd and you're going to get Peter and you're going to hear about the other influences in Peter's life that we couldn't put in the boy from Oz like uh, Francis Fay, Melissa Manchester, Olivia Newton-John, Liza Minnelli. We don't really talk that much about Liza, we don't talk that much about Judy and there's a whole story there that um, is really fascinating and interesting to be told. So I'm looking at Peter's work in this tour from a slightly different point of view than I normally do. What drives me is to keep him alive to a generation which really have missed out on a really wonderful Australian. And I am sad about Peter's, uh, Peter's passing, but also I'm grateful that you know, I'm the one that's kind of you know, been given the rights really to um, legitimately keep him alive. Fantastic, actually. Yeah, no, I only ever seen him on Dancing with the Stars and loved him with that because I, I love what he does there, but absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant show. Oh, marvellous! Absolutely fabulous. Yes, he's terrific. I knew he would be. Oh, it was wonderful. I thought it was great. I, yeah, didn't know much about his history, so it was really nice to see. Him.